Hey peeps, it's Triple L, and right now it's time for Bleach, chapter 684, my thoughts and my impressions. And peeps, with this, this might be the end of the fight, and what can I say? Well, actually, after looking online on different forum posts and comment sections, people aren't very happy about this. So the first big question I'm actually going to pose to you guys is, how happy are you with the ending of this fight or with this chapter overall because there's a lot of things that you can really complain about but before we get into that let's actually talk about the positives of the chapter first the chapter is effectively the culmination of the fight Ichigo struck back at Bok and Uryu was instrumental in that it was great to see Uryu get a purpose in this chapter applauding I'm applauding that that was great regardless of the mechanism by which he did it which I'll talk about later it was a good moment for Uryu. He was instrumental to beating Bok at that point. The next really good moment that we could argue for was Aizen having that little bit of small talk at the beginning with Ichigo. I thought that was a, it was a very much appreciated moment and it's nice to know that Aizen had already found out that he could manipulate Bok's perception of the future to an extent with his Kyokasu Retsu. So that was also a really nice little thing to have. And then the rest of the chapter was pretty much Ichigo and Bok covering the screen in black and Bok having really good faces actually. Like the, the art on Bok was also very nicely done. And finding out about uh, the arrow and the way it works, yeah, it was, it was alright. It was good to see that. But now let's talk about the things that people are really not liking about this chapter because depending on how seriously you take things, it might be something you don't enjoy. It might be something you do. First thing that we have to look at, because I think it's important, it's Ichigo's sword. Because Bach has that habit of always breaking swords. And man, when Ichigo's sword is breaking, I'm looking at the pieces too, and it looks like there's, it looks like there's cement on the sword. Okay, what I understand with what happened with the sword, seeing it revert back to its Shikai form Zangetsu. And mind you, this isn't the same Shikai form that Ichigo's had since... Uh, he's gotten his new powers. I think he's still in Bankai. But it's the form of his old sword. So here's what I'm thinking is happening. Right? I think the sword was always there in that Bankai form. Except that that sword is effectively who Ichigo is. So it kind of just got repurposed into the Bankai. And it got refurbished. It got redone. And it was supposed to be a symbol of Ichigo's acceptance of all his powers. And by having Ichigo revert back to that sword for the final blow, that was effectively a bookend. Because when you look at it, this is what happened in Ichigo's power development. Ichigo got his Quincy powers under control. He went out to try and fight people with it. He didn't get any fights. And then once he came back to Bok, he got his Quincy powers taken away. With the sword, it really just seems to me like... Ichigo got these powers, but he was being reverted back or forced back into his original kind of state before the, the Thousand Year Blood War, just to have this kind of bookend feeling to it. Because let's face it, for a long time Bleach fan, seeing the old Zangetsu sword is very symbolic and it carries a lot of meaning to it. And you could also argue a lot of things about Ichigo's current state of mind by having Zangetsu be the base of the Bankai. It just uh, it, it goes more with the theme of acceptance of Ichigo's heritage and acceptance of what Zengetsu was. Because we remember, Zengetsu kind of was a manifestation of Juha Bak to a degree. I mean, you'd really have to uh, argue that one. But uh, yeah, you know, the sword is really there as a bookend, I think. Especially when you look at Ichigo's power development and the way that Bak stripped him of his powers to this point. It was a bookend. Now, let's talk about the arrow. The arrow is a big issue in this chapter for a lot of people. And man, it's actually crazy looking at like even Manga Stream's comment section. And it's over, already over a thousand comments. And the chapter hasn't been out that long. No doubt people have been looking at it because it's the, probably one of the last chapters of Bleach. I actually wouldn't be surprised if we end last week at 685. And I don't know if that's confirmed or not. But anyway, the arrow. The arrow is a big deal because it is a device that was introduced about three chapters ago. So we had a very pivotal device introduced in three chapters. It hasn't been built up otherwise. There is a very, very slight reference to it 
in one of the earlier chapters, back in during the flashback chapter, the bit where we saw Uryu's dad operating on his mother, that is the only kind of forward clue we could have had to that arrow. And even then, I think it was done with enough leeway that Kubo can kind of make it up as he went along if he was pressed to do so. But we find out how the arrow works. It's that the silver is formed in a person's heart when Bok, in particular, activates his power to siphon or redistribute power. So once Bok takes away power from a person, that silver forms in their heart. And then that very same silver is like Wolf's Plane. It's like the bane of Bok's existence. It's like all things like are kind of banes of people's existence. It's made from him by his own action. So, you know, there's some kind of poetic justice in that. But also, what you end up having is this is a very crucial weapon. It makes sense why Uryu's dad would have it on hand. And then Uryu shooting Bok with it. And also, the one that told Uryu of the mechanism of that particular arrow was Uryu's grandfather. But there's a few issues I have with that explanation. One being, how does he know that this is Bok's ultimate weakness? Was Bok taken down by that before? Because Bok's the only person that can activate the, uh, what's it called, Oshuin? I, I don't recall his, I don't recall the name, but it's the one where Bok pretty much takes back the power he gave people. So, how did he know that? That's, that's just weird. That's just a weird bit of information to know, I think. But anyway, having Uryu shoot Bok with that was a very pivotal moment. It's a concept that was only introduced three chapters ago. A concept that you could argue was introduced over 50 chapters ago. But then the big question is, how did Bok not see that coming if he has the almighty power? Because in this chapter, we, we find out that Bok actually did get killed by Ichigo in that first or last assault last chapter. But he was able to come back because he just, he can rewrite the future. He can just come back. But then Uryu shot Bok. Now, the big thing you could say here is that Bok's shown that his power is not that powerful. It's not almighty. I mean, it's pretty effective, but it's not almighty. There have been moments where Ichigo has kind of been able to play with it. There's been moments where things aren't going exactly the way that Bok envisioned them. And we get that kind of confirmation towards Bok's fall because he's talking about the dream was actually a vision of the future. But look at that dream. It's not very specific to what was happening. It was very like affected by past notions of Ichigo. It wasn't a very accurate dream. So I think the Almighty is not that is not that effective. And that's the only thing that could justify Bok not being able to tell that Uryu is coming up right behind him. And it's also because Bok is still kind of a person. He's not very much, he doesn't have the mind of a god. If he got caught up in the rage or in the pride he felt from beating Ichigo, then I could very much see it where he just isn't using Almighty to his full potential and he would miss one of the possibilities such as Uryu coming out of nowhere and shooting him with the arrow. And because of the arrow's effects, it's effects of negating a person's ability for a instinct. It, it made it so that it created that window of time where Ichigo could go up against Bok and slash him before Bok could make any kind of move to kind of defend himself or to kind of rewrite future. So the mechanism of the arrow and how it worked is okay. Uh, the use of the arrow and how quickly it came into the story though, that's a bit of a questionable kind of issue. But in this situation, maybe the arrow only worked because Bok was in a situation where he was pretty annoyed, he was pretty frazzled, he had just come back from death, he was pretty weakened, or he was in a pretty fragile mental state, and he just missed the fact that Uri was about to shoot him with the arrow. I would accept that as a fair explanation. Now, I, let's see, is there anything else I want to say about this? Do, do, do. One thing I'm worried about is that at the end, Bok was getting back his almighty, like the Shroud of Eyes was kind of covering him up again. So I'm wondering if Bok can just rewrite himself back into the future. Because his almighty did come in, we got Uryu kind of saying that he's not going to make it in time. Ichigo isn't going to make it in time. Maybe Bok was shocked enough by seeing Zangetsu that he didn't activate almighty in time as well. You know, who knows? Anything could happen at this point. But I really do think next week is the last chapter. And if that's the case, how do you all feel about this ending to Bleach? If this is the end, you know, there are a lot of things I feel are just missed elements. 
you know, you could talk about, let's see, Shuhei's Bankai. It was kind of told that he was training for it. You're not going to get it. A bunch of the vice captain's Bankai's, uh, Shinji's Bankai. You know, a lot of the little details are probably going to be missed. And one thing we all have to keep in mind is that Kubo is being rushed. I am almost completely sure. And I, I apologize if I actually am wrong with this, but I'm pretty sure there was one interview that came out that said that Kubo and his editors has settled on the final chapter number or the final date of the last Bleach chapter. So they've known about this for a long time if that assumption of my memory is true. And in that case, you know, this is kind of unavoidable. Things just got out of control and now we are at a situation where a lot of people are going to be really annoyed about this chapter. Overall though, for me, uh, I liked it. I liked that Uryu in particular got something to do. I'm I'm glad that he was a kind of pivotal character in all this, even though I think Ryoken could have been the one to take it out. Ishida's dad could have done it, or sorry, Uryu's dad could have done it. Regardless, even with the Uryu thing, how it kind of incorporated Uryu's grandfather into the story as well by saying it was Uryu's grandfather that told him the thing about the still silver. You know, that's that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for me, peeps. Like I said, I like the chapter, and I would very much like to hear what you guys think of the chapter. Are you happy with this chapter? Will it do? Or are you just absolutely livid about this? Uh, let me know. Put it down in the comments below. But till next time, have a good day.